not fully exposed like that. We just saw there. Oh my god! A T62! Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, it's there. It's clearly a Cold War T62. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. Hi and welcome to History Legends. In this video, we'll do a step-by-step -step historical breakdown of the Soviet 1985 movie called The Battle for Moscow. It's a war movie classic, a juggernaut of six hours of screen time divided in four parts. But before we start, let's get some context about this battle scene. Put simply, it's the last line of defense of the Soviet army before the Germans reach Moscow. And the reason why I'm showing you this clip in particular, it's because it features one of the most famous Soviet war songs called The Sacred War. You ready? Let's go. Okay, you see the general, three stars in red, lieutenant general. And I think this guy is Rokosovsky. Lieutenant general is an army commander. And the other guy you see is like a raspberry red. That's the Signal Corps. Spasiba. Thank you. Okay, you see, I think it's an anti-aircraft weapon in the back. You see the trenches, very well done. I like it. Oh, they're gonna play music. Nemanje, attention! It's to motivate the troops. It's the last line of defense. The soldiers need some morale, a little boost. Okay, check this out. DP27, beautiful. Okay, the telephone lines. Okay, quick pause. A major problem of Soviet artillery in 1941 was a shortage in radios. That means they still heavily relied on field telephones like we can see in the scene. These were adequate for static defense and this is well portrayed. But as you can imagine, carrying these telephone lines left and right proved to be a burden and it was totally unreliable with fast moving mechanized units. And this also partly explains the high cost in lives of Soviet counterattacks in 1941 and 1942 because the artillery simply couldn't keep up and support them. Beautiful. The artillery should be dug in. Look at these massive cannons. Battery. Four howitzers. Okay, fire. Okay. So in the front, we can see 122 millimeter howitzers and in the back, you can see the heavier 155 millimeter ones. And look at this recoil. I love it. Amazing. So just this alone makes it an impressive sight. What I also like here is that you can see some trenches in front of the artillery. They're dug in. That's well done. The artillery also has to be protected. And we even saw some anti-aircraft weapons, so all this is well done. However, there's one problem here, is that the artillery is not camouflage at all. It's not dug in, and there's nothing to protect it from an airstrike. Usually the Soviets love to camouflage the artillery near forests, in trenches, with nets, just to make it as hard as possible for the Germans to spot them. And to, and to show you how it would have looked like, check out this picture, which shows how deep the cannons would have been dug in. And to show you an example, you can see on this picture how the Soviets dug in massive foxholes for their 155 millimeter howitzers. And another thing I can notice right away is the lack of ammunition near the cannons. We should be able to see ammo boxes. We should be able to see artillery shells. We should be able to see a lot of used artillery shells. And this picture next to me shows you how a Soviet artillery battery would have actually looked like. So you see, it's much more messy. 
but in this shot it's clearly made for cinematic reasons uh, a clean empty shot i just love to see the soldiers running to the cannons like no cgi real oh you see okay this is what the artillery battery should have looked like so i'm pretty happy they actually added it so i take back what i said well done these cannons are massive i can't believe they're world war ii they look like cold war era You know, we often talk about the Soviet army tanks or their infantry frontal assault. But the artillery had always been considered the elite branch of the Russian army. And this tradition persisted into the Soviet era. And to give you an idea how strong Soviet artillery actually was, in 1941, despite severe shortages, every Soviet rifle division had 48 howitzers compared to 12 for every German infantry division. That's four times more firepower. However, the problem of the Soviet Army was that they lacked artillery technicians, artillery specialists. Overall, that means that German artillery, despite having a numerical disadvantage, proved to be better because they were more precise and better trained. The 105mm one is just a massive, it's a juggernaut. It's insane. Look, this, yes, exactly. This is exactly what it would have looked like. Perfect. I'm very happy they added this. You see, the dug in. Oh, you see that little hideout in the trenches. Very well done. Okay, telephone lines. Oh my god! What is this? Do you see how the Soviet anti tank cannons are completely exposed? They're not dug in, no camouflage, no nets, nothing out in the open. Easy targets. And if you look at the bottom corner, you can see an empty ammo box with only two shells. And overall, there's not a single ammo box around. With two shells, they won't last a minute. What do you expect them to do with two shells? So again, we face a purely cinematic shot like the Soviets like to do, but it's highly unrealistic. The only thing that's good in the scene is that the range with the German tanks in the background that you can see is actually good. But again, Commander, just epic with the music in the background. What does Biegle mean? Tell me in the comment section. Okay, now starts the BS. Look at all these German tanks just moving, like clustered. And in the back, there's no tanks, just they're all there at the same time. Like, same position. No German artillery support. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't believe it, they actually added a German Tiger tank in 1941. <laughs> okay, as you know, this is totally anachronistic. <laughs> okay, it, oh my god, it gets even worse. Oh my god. It, at the back, you can see a Soviet light tank, a BT-5. No way the Germans actually use them. Oh my god, now they have T-34s. I have to stop every two seconds. I'm dying because they were like, nobody's gonna notice. They have two T-34s and not even... Early versions, but late war versions, T-34-85. <laughs> At least there's a lot of tanks and no CGI. Oh my god, I hope no one has an AK-47. Okay, let's look. Okay, they all have MP-40s. Just like we saw, all the German soldiers were equipped with MP-40s. But realistically, only 10 to 15% of German infantrymen were actually equipped with it. All the other German soldiers should be equipped with both action car 98s. And again, when you see them running like this, there's no hierarchy, no structure, no squads, no platoons, no companies. They're just all moving forward. So that's pretty bad. And another problem is that there's not a single German with a machine gun. And we know this is the central part of the squad's firepower. So this would have been very important to see. But at least no AK-47. On a brighter note, what I love in Soviet movies is just the scale of the battle. Like, like they can have thousands of extras like that. Whereas movies nowadays, it's hard to have more than 50 extras in one shot. Okay, no, no AKs, right? So actually they should be in column behind the tanks, not fully exposed like that. We just saw there. Oh my god! A T62! Oh. 
Okay, let's have it. Okay, there's another one, T62 here. Let's see. Okay, okay, it's there. It's clearly a Cold War T62. It just makes me laugh because obviously, even the Tiger tanks, it's fake Tiger tanks. It's basically a modified T34. Even the Panzer IVs are modified T44s. The fact that they modified German tanks is okay, apart from the Tiger tank obviously being used in 1941, which is not historically accurate. But overall, if they modify Soviet tanks to make it look like German ones, I'm okay with it. But the fact that they actually use Soviet tanks in the German ranks, okay, this is bad. But the worst that they use Cold War tanks, like anything they had in stock, <laughs> they launched it in the movie. <laughs> Imagine they made a World War II movie like Fury about tanks and then you see this massive German tank assault but because of budgets and to fill in the gaps they simply use modern German tanks like the Leopard 2 just to fill in the gaps. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Alright again, Tigers, like anything, anything goes. German half-tracks, alright. Thankfully, there's this song in the background that makes everything 10x more epic. Okay, okay, you see the, the tank here in the middle. It's supposed to be a Panzer IV. Obviously, it doesn't look at all like a Panzer IV. And it's actually built on a T-44 chassis. But yeah, only the Soviets can make epic shots like that. No CGI at all. Looks pretty epic. But what I wanted to say before we cut with the T-62 is that the reason why it's not realistic to have a German assault like that is simply because Soviet artillery that we just saw previously would wreck hell this assault. You know, they would fire a few rounds and that would be the end of it. So to have some sort of protection against Soviet firepower, whether machine guns or artillery, the German infantry would move behind the tanks. And another reason is that you want to have the infantry as close as possible to the tanks in order to support the attack. The Soviets in the trenches, they have anti-tank rifles, they have anti-tank grenades that can damage the tanks. So you need the infantry to clean up enemy positions for the tanks to advance. And it's some sort of mutual support. The infantry help the tanks, but the tanks also provide firepower for the infantry. All right, so artillery observation posts, but this is all I have for you today. So I would love to react to the entire movie, but it's literally six hours. So I won't do that. But if you like this video, I might react to some other parts of this movie. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. In that case, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And if you want me to create more videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the description box.